before we get, get started tonight here, ladies and gentlemen, on Fast Break on IE Sports Radio, I want to introduce you to two of our sponsors. First, Legacy Financial. Last year was a tough year. However, staying positive, keeping your faith, and continuing to work hard is the goal. If you're in a financial struggle at the moment and you need some help, or if you're doing well and you want to get to the next level, either way, give them a call. Also, if you're looking for a new opportunity to work for yourself and earn more money part-time, give them a call also. Call AO at 510-928-2104 to book your appointment today. Andrew and AO are just two people on a mission to help families build a legacy. Also, you can find them on social media at Twitter at Legacy underscore Uncut. Also on Instagram at Sam underscore Uncut. And also on Facebook, Legacy Financial. The Southern California Warriors, a semi-pro team in Southern Cal, is another sponsor of us here at IA Sports Radio. The world of semi-pro sports is unlike any other in sports organizations. Players pay to play in hopes of so many different outcomes, whether it's planning to get film to try out for professional teams, big-time colleges, or just trying to play and to, get, to stay in shape. No matter what, all semi pro players have one thing in common. And that's playing for the love of the game. The SoCal Warriors have been on a quest to earn titles and give players a second chances since 2017. Wherever you're in Southern California or anywhere in the world, give semi pro sports a chance if you love your sport. You may get that second chance you've been waiting for as an athlete. You can find them on social media at Twitter at SoCal's. Warriors, Instagram at Seven California Warriors, and also on Facebook at Seven California Warriors. Now on to the show. Well, Gazek had a chance to make history, but things didn't go out go well for them and get their matchup against Baylor. So we discussed you know the final four championship game. Also, Sean Miller got fired for Arizona. And we discussed if, you know, was he fired for the right reasons? Or for the correct reason. We'll discuss that and much more here on Fast Break. Live on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for for this all is sports, and you're welcome to join us. And join us as you shout tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We're up here for another episode here tonight on Fast Break, episode 49 on April the 11th, 2021. With a lot of things going on in the sports world, especially basketball, you know, we're still trucking along. Even though college basketball has ended, some still big news coming out in the world of college hoops. But D Lock, Mr. Lock, how you doing tonight, sir? I'm doing pretty good, man. Uh, we just had a major shocker this past week. Um, we talked about last show. Hell, I told you that I had Gonzaga win it all. I mean, Baylor came through and, and pulled the upset. Well, I guess you can call it an upset, but yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff going on as well on top of that big upset, and in the NBA as well. Oh yes, it, it 
we was going ahead and dive into that game. I had Gonzaga. You had Gonzaga. You know, I, I kind of said to myself, it wouldn't surprise me if Baylor won. Because you look at look at it, these are the best two teams in the country from beginning to to the end to the championship game, and give Baylor to the credit in the world. They, you know they took care. They took advantage of their matchups, and they kind of you know got ahead of Gonzaga, and they you know kept them at bay, and they won the game. Yeah, um, to be honest, they just it, it, to me it seems like uh, Gonzaga showed their card against UCLA, and. Baylor took advantage. They jumped out and they couldn't do anything about it once they got in front of them. And it's just like they were struggling the whole time, if you ask me. I mean, it was it, they were kind of putting some shots in, getting a rhythm. And when they got a rhythm, um, got the chemistry and everything going, so did Baylor. Yeah. Um, you know, the way Baylor played, getting the switches, especially against, you know, Gonzaga's big man, mainly Drew uh, Timmy. And you know, work on that matchup to a, to perfection. You know, driving it in, making them work on defense, and which I thought I thought Timmy was a little more more lateral than that. What's all that? And then you know, you see him playing against those getting those mismatches with those Baylor guards and stuff. It's like, damn, dude, I thought you. More a little bit more quicker than this. I mean, I think we've seen him play Drew Timmy playing play enough in his career that he thought he's more agile and stuff like that, had more lateral quickness. But I was like, damn. I was like, I said to myself, D Lock, I was like, ooh, your NBA chances. I mean, you may last for a couple years in the league, but after that. You might be playing in Europe. Yeah. Um, yeah I don't know. That, that game kind of was a shocker to me the whole game. I just, you know, I think maybe they just came off that crazy win, which is the reason why they kind of was feeling that good. But, um, I mean, that's why we play the game. I mean, it goes back to, you know, the New England Patriots being the only team that was 18-0. and 0. And went to the Super Bowl, and, and you know everybody was expecting them to win, and they lose to the Giants. So, you know, these things are um, kind of, you know, surprising. But that's why we love sports for these kind of moments. I'm pretty sure somebody won a hell of a lot of money. They bet it on Baylor. Oh yeah. And then you know, and the commentators in the game, they keep on pressing like. You know, Baylor being undersized and stuff like that, and so and I like, uh, we'll discuss this later on the show. In the nineties week, our theme week here at Ice Force Radio, about the playing styles between the nineties and today. But I didn't see that as an issue. I mean, what we know about Baylor over the past few years, they got some long, late, lanky, athletic dudes. They can get up and down the court. You know, Coach Drew is going to ask those guys, hey, if you can shoot, you got to shoot, you're going to play with me. Play for me. Big man, nah, you, you got you to gotta be a shooter to play in my squad. And you're going to defend too. You know, not, not like, you know, Jim Behan in Syracuse, where it's big man, long and lanky, but. Some you know, over the years, some can't shoot uh, shoot for the save their life. But I thought you know, yeah, I mean, that's just what we come to in the new basketball era. I mean, we'll talk about it. Is um, this new basketball era? Big men are shooting. Um, you know, they're they're to the point to where we'll see Carl Anthony Towns being able to shoot, Anthony Davis being able to shoot. These guys are able to, you know. Stand up, Obama's trying to get some shots in the three point line. You know, Vooch, these guys, they're making this transition to being able to shoot that big, and it's showing in college as well. 
Yeah, it, you know, you see it more in a high school game too. Uh, d- depending, you know, on the coaching style. But if if you don't got a guy, big man can shoot. You know what are you doing now in these days? <clears throat> you got the old school peers like my dad saying, you know. If you got like get a guy six six and above, you want to put him down the post like in high school and stuff like that. But not in today's age. Yeah, that'll work every once in a while. But you gotta be a shooter, in a sense. If you're gonna play for these schools out here, not even D one, but go down to a lower level, D two, D three, N I I A. You know, you gotta be a shooter. And Baylor took advantage of that. Drew Timmy couldn't get nothing really going, you know, offensively. He got his moments and stuff like that. Jalen Suggs didn't really get off. And they've defended them well in the perimeter also. So, you know, congrats to Baylor to winning the championship. First one in school history. I kind of said, like, like, you know, last week, you know, that's a program that shouldn't be running. Going back to their past and stuff. But, you know. Gave, gave credit to Coach Drew. Taking that program. Getting to where, you know. Where it is today. You know. We talked about last week, you know. Roy Williams leaving. And then that job opening eventually went to Herbert Davis. Indiana had a job opening. Mike Woodson got that job. You know, we'll talk about Sean Miller here in a second, but, you know, the Arizona job opening up. But, you know, why leave when you got a good thing going at Waco, in my eyes? Yeah, I mean, my thing is, with all these different jobs, you're going to have opportunities, and... We talked about it before, like a lot of when it comes to college jobs, you don't have the same. It's not the same thing as a professional job because recruiting is involved. So, um, you know, you you mess around and don't get recruits the first two, three years in, you might be in trouble for the you know years after. But if you mess around and get you a couple of recruits, you know, early, you might be pretty solid uh, down the road. So um, it's going to be very interesting, but. You know, Baylor, they did a hell of a job. I mean, not just one person played good for them, but a lot of people, play, a lot of players played very well. And like I said, somebody who took the risk of, uh, why can't I say a big risk? Because they were, you know, number one ranked team in their in their side. But um, the, the, the people that did bet on them, they definitely won a lot of money. I definitely agree. And I want to shout out to the chat real quick. Terry Rodriguez in the chat. Welcome, sir. Hope you're having a good day. And I know you've been out and about watching lacrosse. So keep doing your thing, bro. Keep doing your thing. And also, Marcus Los, great in the chat as well. And I'll just touch on Gonzaga real quick. Damn, man. You're about one game away from perfection. Like Marcus mentioned in chat, I think that UCL game, like you mentioned too, that UCL game kind of really wore him down. And it's kind of that it's kind of that game that you wish you had earlier because you ran to the other side who was about just as good as you. And it's played comfort, tougher competition throughout the year, more than you. And that team named Baylor beat you by double digits. Right. And, you know, you know, we'll see who comes back for Gonzaga and whatnot and see if they can run it back again. But let me ask you this, d Lock. Will we see another team reach perfection again in the NCAA? Uh, I don't 
don't think so. Um, the reason why is because that's a very tough task uh, that needs to be done. I mean, you have a lot of different uh, players um, that comes through, and you know the chemistry of these. The reason why it's very tough also is because you have you have um, these players that are one and done. So they come in and then they leave. Uh, and that's going to play a huge part with any role like that. Uh, Gonzaga is one of those teams where um, a lot of their guys come back and they just happen to grab a solid, great player like Jalen Suggs and it paid dividends for him. So uh, for me to see another team do that, that's going to be very tough. Um, very tough. But uh, I think we see some teams that'd be pretty close. I I agree with you there. The one and done thing doesn't help things in a sense. Um, you got it. If you're going, I mean, if if you happen to hit that perfect that perfection route, you gotta have the right combination of. Young guys and veterans on your squad. You know, Florida, they pick up a big commitment uh, transfer-wise. And I'm going that they've been talking about, we ain't talked too much about what we softly mentioned. The transfer portal. A lot of guys been transferring here this past off season. A lot. You know, Alabama, this before we got on I did, about an hour ago, they got transferred for Furman. I've got uh, Noah Gurley, one of the top transfers out there. And then before that, Naomi uh, Burnett from Texas Tech. We talked about him about a few weeks ago. Him leaving there, he's going to Bama. And then you got you know what's who's coming back from there and whatnot. Perfect storm right there. You know? It's going to be tough, d It's like, you know, some schools got the balance to do it. Then you look around the country like Minnesota and Boston College who got new coaches, but then players are leaving. So those new coaches are going to have right. to take time to build up their squads and, and also throw in Penn State as well. And then also, we we'll see what Mike Wilson going to do up in Indiana. That's going to be a tough task. Who's going to be perfect? I mean, who can achieve that goal and stuff like that? It's going to be tough, tall, a tough task. The thing is, I mean, what makes it, like I said, what makes it so, so tough is the fact that you got guys that have these ambitions of going to the NBA and they have that rule. Um, hell, I mean, even though we talk about basketball all the time, I just think how hard it would be. <laughs> If in, in in college football, them guys can stay one year and leave. Like, you know, half of these guys, we wouldn't see a lot of these recruits stay and be built, you know, from the ground up somewhat and be ready their third or fourth year to be that next guy. So, you know, for NBA, like I said, it's, it's a totally different thing. Um, NBA, you mess around and, you know, have a hell of a season, already have that name, and you peak right at the right time. Dude, you're out of there. No question. So um, that's what I expect um, to go, to happen, and it, and it continues. Uh, it's going to continue unless they have some kind of rule change, which I highly doubt. Yeah. And then, you know, speaking of transfers and coaches, stuff like that, we'll go ahead and dive into this. Arizona. Just a few days ago, uh, fired co- head coach Sean Miller. Sean Miller has been there for 12 years at Arizona. Has won three Pac-12 Coach of the Year awards. Had 309 record there. Was previously the coach at uh, Xavier. Did a uh, very great job there. But I think, you know, with Miller getting fired, the dark cloud, you know, what happened with 2017, the FBI deal, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. It it kind of lingered. And 
it kind of lingered on the court wise. It what it what it I'll say this. If you go this route cheating, stuff like that, you know, from what we seen from that FBI report years ago, like in Kansas, Louisville, LSU, who else is involved? Alabama, Auburn, you know, and others. If you're going to do stuff like that, only thing you re- can really do to keep yourself at that situation is continue winning. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you can't, you can't slip up, and you know you have a slip up. In any case, you're done. So, you know, you have to. As bad as it may sound, we see a lot of, um, a lot of things get tossed under the rug for winning. We've seen that multiple times, and. Um, it's not like it should be promoted because it shouldn't, but this is what we see on a regular basis. And when you have off the field issues or off the court issues or personal issues and it lingers and it rises above, you know, what you can do, I guess, for the university, they're going to, they're going to speak upon it. And it's not just college basketball. That's with any sport, which in right it should, but this is what, you know, this is what we see. So, uh, for me, um, I personally feel like no matter you know how uh, good somebody is, um, these are the things that should be talked about. Is the personal issues off, you know, off the court, off the field that should not be ignored. But um, we've seen it on every level at one point. So um, I expect uh, for it. It somewhat grow and be better over time, but you know, a lot of the times, you know, this is what is going to come back and haunt you when you do something like this, or your name is, you know, put in different scenarios. Yeah, you know, and I'm going to the chat real quick. You know, discussing, you know, about Damon Stoudemire potentially being candidate. You know, he's been the head coach at. Uh, oh boy, where is he head coach at? I want to say, yeah, Pacific. You know, so he he's been interviewed. Uh, one of the top assistant Gonzaga has been interviewed as well. His name is slipping me right now. And I feel like they interviewed somebody else as well. And if I was Luke Walton, I throw my name in the hat too, because you know the NBA ain't, ain't really working for him. My eyes. But back to Miller and this whole thing. You had your assistant coach go to jail or prison, whatever. And if that something like that happened and he was your sacrifice, you got to keep the standards up. You, you got to keep those standards up. Hell, same thing with Bruce Pearl and Auburn. I feel bad for um, Chuck Person going to going to jail for Bruce Pearl. I don't want to go to jail for Bruce Pearl for anything. <laughs> they they can offer me Willy Wonka's Factory, uh, <laughs> steak and apple, and you know steak and uh, and Oprah's company. Now, I wouldn't take no bull for Bruce Pearl. Hell no. Yeah. But but look but look at these coaches now that got caught up in that mess. Bill Self got a lifetime contract, which is amazing in a sense. Will Wade had a pretty strong year, but I feel like the time is ticking on that one as well. Miller got fired. Avery, he's gone. So, I don't think Arizona fired him cause, just because, you know, for these things. I think it's just, you know, you didn't keep winning like we kind of hoped you would. 
if you look at the record post 2017, 2018 for Arizona, 17 and 15, tied for eighth in the uh, conference. 21 and 11, tied for fifth in the conference. This past year, 17 9, fifth in the conference. But, you, you know, you self impose, you know, not going to the po- uh, postseason each year. And if you didn't do that, you probably made the tournament in a sense. And the way the Pac-12 performed the tournament, who knows how well you would have done. Right. But I wish, I I would hope Arizona would have done the right thing, but they didn't do the right thing. They fired him more for... I didn't like the move that much, to be honest with you, either. You don't like him getting fired? I mean, I, I feel like, like I said, college basketball it has so much, um, so much that can go into it. Um, you, he's had a hell of a, he's had a hell of a run there in Arizona, but um, understanding the commitment of you know want to move on. But who are you replacing him with is the biggest question, and what do you expect? Um, he's been to the he's been uh, to what three elite eight appearances with this team. So, you know he's he's been there for you know since oh nine. But now you have to move on and find somebody that can replicate what he has done. So. And what he can do, um, like I said. But the biggest thing is, you do have the off the court thing that plays a huge part. So, you know, when it comes to that, there's no, you know, there's no disagreeing. But um, if you look at, like I said, we're in, in the stage now where people are looking more so of, okay, well, what kind of stats he had? Like, what did he do? You know, there. So, um, I personally feel like. It was probably more geared towards the off the field thing, so off the court. I keep saying off the field, but you know, you get, get my drift up saying off the court, and um, I would probably lean it towards that. But if they were going to make this fine based off that, they should have done this a couple of years ago. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we kind of wish he they did it right there a couple of years ago, but you know, call it sports. And, you know, you know, people have kind of joked about, you know, so, how some of these coaches stay longer than they, than, they, than they are in places. And we kind of go back to, you know, hey, maybe they had some dirt on somebody or something like that. Or somebody, some dirt on the office or whatever. Athletic director. We kid to joke about that, but sometimes I think some of that stuff kind of happen, happens. You know, I know it's not a sport, but look at football. And kind of tying back to LSU. Les Miles, head coach of Kansas, what well, was, he got let go from stuff that happened down at LSU. You know, with the women, Title IX, stuff like that. You know, the AD there in Kansas got fired right along with him. Because he brought him in in the fold and kind of knew that stuff was going on or that investigation was going right. on or he knew about that situation. Right. You you, you got to do your due diligence and whatnot. You can bring these coaches in. But, you know, it's kind of a, a dirty game that you got to keep up with the Joneses. You got to keep up. Well, you know, UCA doing it, and then we got to do it too to keep the, you know, get the same type of recruits. You know, we can't have UCA winning and whatnot. We got to hold the standard. And, you know, and going to the chat, Terrence saying, I kind of wonder what's going to happen with Andy Enfield and USC. Enfield is a good recruiter. And you kind of mentioned the, the Mobley bros. But he's kind of average as a coach. 
good but not great. Hey, like, like I just said, we, we all know USA got money. Private institution, all that stuff. They, they'll drop that um, Carl's Jr. bag somewhere. And keep it pushing. But I will leave this note here. Now, if if, if Will Wade kind of listens to this or find a way to get to this, listen to this, I'll say this. Dude, you better win. You better win at LSU best you can. Or if things get a little shaky and an NBA job opens up, you better take the first train smoking. Because if you start losing, I don't think nobody else is going to touch them um, anywhere else in college basketball for the time being. What's your thoughts on that? I mean, you got to, like I said, the winning, you, you got to make sure that you you win. I mean, that's just, like I said, man, winning cures all. Let's just, let's just, let's just put it like that. And that is something that a lot of people will praise over a lot of things. You know, so if you do find a way to win, you know, you have, look at Nick Saban. He's constantly winning. Constantly. So, um, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, um, Gene, uh, I can't even, I can I told you I keep forgetting his, uh, his uh his last name, the UConn basketball coach. I can never say his women's basketball coach. I can never say Gino his, his last name. Yes. Always win. Usually. So, you know, with that being said, um, you know, winning will like I said, it goes back to winning will winning is something that a lot of universities, you know, a lot of sports look at because it brings in a lot of money. So yes, I definitely agree with you on that. So yeah, we'll put a ball on that, and then we'll see who Arizona hires. You know, will be a quick hire. I don't know. We'll probably hear something by Monday as well. So you know, for for a Pac-12 that had a strong sh- uh, showing in the tournament, you know, for Arizona, they got to get this hire right because the way these other programs are. You see it like, you know, it's coming up. It's coming. USC, I think, you know, if I think finally doing some consistency there that they really never have, but maybe infield get things going. Dana Altman, Dana Altman and um, Oregon, fine coach. I was always having his team in top 25. Oregon State had a very surprised run in the tournament. We'll see if they can keep that success up. You know, Arizona State, pretty de- de- decent program. We'll see how things go. The watch two Washington programs, they suck. Yeah, they suck. Especially the Hus- Huskies, they suck. I'm like, damn, y'all suck. Y'all better might as well just ke- uh, let L- Lorenzo Romars to stay there. But we'll come back to Pac-12 and talk all that stuff and discuss that again in the future. But D-Lock, did you watch the Nets and Lakers game last night? Well, the original plan was just to skim through it and check it every, you know, by ESPN now. But after I seen the game, it was pretty close. I was expecting the Nets to blow them out. But seeing the game was close and Drummond was playing how he was playing, I definitely tuned in. Definitely tuned in. I must say, I was very impressed by the Lakers. That ten, the ejection that Kyrie and Dennis got was kind of bush league. Well, being, them being thrown out was kind of was bush league in my eyes. 
But mm-hmm. it's like, come on now. Y'all throw him out from that. But give credit to the Lakers, man. They came out, you know, took advantage with Kyrie going out along with Schroeder. And, 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 and you know, they kind of, and, you know, for this group of Lakers, well, that, when we talked we talk that off the air, off the air without Kuz, without AD, without LeBron, this was a good confidence builder for this group. You know, to kind of show, you know, what what they can do, you know, what Vogel and his coaching staff can, like, get point out in key situations come down the road, especially playoff time. Um, who can step up like I, like I found on McKinney. Guy hasn't played, played too much, has 10 points, nine rebounds off the bench. Played very strong on the boards. Last night, Ben McElmore, who they just got off waivers, five for ten for the three point line, and with Wesley Matthews with the Achilles injury, we we'll probably see a lot more of him, you know, in the coming games. You know, but, you know, we talk about Andre Drummond. Mm-hmm. You, you mentioned him. He had a strong game. You played him in FanDuel last night. And he ate like crazy. <laughs> you know, sitting there backing down LaMarcus Aldridge like he was nothing. Mm-hmm. So I was very impressed with the, like, this like a group winning by double digits. Now, granted, yes, James Harden didn't play. Kyrie got ejected out. Kevin Durant only played about 24 minutes, 24, 25 minutes. But he still scored 22 points, which is damn scary. But, you know. But they took advantage of that matchup. Joy Harris didn't shoot well in that game. I was surprised. I'll go ahead. That's not, that was a shocker. I was expecting him to play better than that. Thanks, man. It's weird with the, with the Nets sometimes. If Harden or Kyrie are out. You expect like guys like Joe Harris or um what's that dude's name? Um Bruce Bruce Brown. Bruce Brown to step up a little bit better. But sometimes it's like it's like hit and miss with those dudes. They got so many guys in rotation, you don't know who they're like you don't know it's like Boston, but they got they're like Boston but with just the star players of Katie, Kyrie and you know, James Hart, but they got so many guys. TLC needs to be getting. I'm think his minutes have just went down. We haven't seen much from DeAndre Jordan either. Well, hell, he didn't. He didn't even play last night. He was a, a coach's decision. Oh yeah, it's over with him. And we talked about this months ago, before that that James Harden trade. Jared Allen was getting those bulk of those minutes. Now you look at it with Argus in the fold. Blake Griffin in the fold. Those guys eating in minutes. And then also you throw in, in the fact they resigned Alize Johnson to a new deal. Nicholas Cla- Claxton, he's a solid big man down low for them. <laughs> we're we're going to see DeAndre Jordan. I don't think we're going to see him at all, to be honest. Because Blake Griffin and DeMarcus Aldridge will turn back a hand of time, they playing like Aldridge look like Portland Aldridge, and hell, Blake Griffin look like he back in L.A. right now. So I don't know how much we, hell, we might mess around to see him get waived. Don't quote me on it, but if we do see it, we'll come back uh, to this. I say, remember I said it on this show <laughs> uh, a couple weeks ago, whenever that it was a possibility that they might waive because I mean they just got. Uh, they just signed, you know, like you said, Johnson. And then now you got Blake Griffin and, and Aldridge looking like a stud right now. So what do you do with DeAndre Jordan? I know he got one year left on his contract. A contract that I question given when he signed with the Nets. 
because it's like, I, I think the Nets, and I, I'm going to get your opinion on this. Do you think the Nets front office kind of wish they didn't sign him to that deal? Kind of, kind of looking at things now, could they spend that $45 million elsewhere and maybe flush out their roster better? Or maybe they could have did something else with that money. I don't know. Maybe get never saw a player. I don't know who. But do you think the Nets office regret signing him that deal when they got Kyrie and KD done? Um, I think so because they probably was expecting. Remember when they got him, they were wanting to get get James Harden, but it was looking like it was a hot chance they weren't going to get him. So at the same time, um, they were planning as if they weren't going to have him. And now that he's there, it's more so of damn, like, okay, well, should we ship this guy? <laughs> now it's like, well, damn, like, did we get rid of this dude? Like, you know what I'm saying? So at the same time, like, I I mean, I don't expect for them to well, I don't know, boy. It's a huge possibility they could. It's just, you know, at this point, uh, why would you what would be the point in and um, keeping him there, especially I, I, if he's not doing any like he's not doing anything for you. Yeah, if he's not doing anything for you, I mean, trying to find a trade for him in the off season. Who I don't know. You know, we see like the other talented big man in the league doing great things right now, like Enos Kanter. Last night, had career high rebounds at 30, 30 rebounds, about twenty uh, three points, I believe, for the uh, Trailblazers. And I tweeted from the Fast Break account last night. And if you're not following us on Fast Break or IESR, please do. After that performance, you know, who's going to sign him to the big office, uh, big offseason deal? Mm. I, I, and I and I and I told, and I told you who, who gonna do it? Orlando, who's gonna do that stupid stuff? It just, oh my gosh! You know who gonna do that dumb jump? It, it's gonna come. Just, just watch. I, just watch. But you see, you seeing him having that monster game, and like I said, like I said, he he he. He's going to get a big contract. Will two? I don't know. But then, hell, look, look where else around the league. I think Kelly on is on like a team option. He's been playing pretty decent with Houston. You know, I don't know Daniel Tyson's contract situation, but that's a guy if, you know, per 36 minutes, you know, look at his stats earlier, could be a decent star for a team. And you don't have to ask him much. Um, the big man from Orlando that got weighed in, in South Toronto. I thought that was a good move right there. Cam Birch. Yeah. Because I think Brocher as a big man, he's too inconsistent. It's like one game he'll have like 20 rebounds, 50, I mean 20 points, 15 rebounds. But the next thing he, he'll come out cold. Right. Like, damn, dude, you could be the next big, big, big game, big man down low, but you're just like too inconsistent. Mm-hmm. See, I got an inconsistent, you know, scale. I got Smush Parker is that 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 inconsistent scale. I got could have done great things, but it's just too inconsistent for my liking. And oh, I could throw Jeff Green in that too, in that, in that tier. But anyways, well, get back to Jordan real quick. You know, maybe around playoff time, he can awaken and give you a strong few games here and there. But if you, but I, I. 
if Brooklyn's expecting, you know, Aldridge and Brake Griffin to to go to rerun the clock back in time to their former selves, I don't see that happening. And you know, and I, it kind of rides on KD's health, really, because Kyrie's going to be out tomorrow's game against Minnesota for personal reason, reasons, wherever that may be. I don't know what the hell's going on with him. But it kind of hits on Kyrie and James Harden's health if they're going to win a championship this year. If not, if Philly, you know, can get back healthy along with Ben Simmons, can find himself and play, get back to playing, you know, Ben Simmons, you know, plays basketball. Then we'll be talking a different story, but like we talked off the air, if they see a full, uh, fully healthy Laker team, you can scratch that. Lakers are whipping their ass. That's what I, I ain't gonna lie. That's the first thing I was thinking. Like, I mean, I know that James Harden didn't play, but hell, you still got Kyrie, Kevin Durant, you got Blake Griffin, you got Aldridge. Like. Okay, James Harden is who he is, but hell, you still got a top three, top four player on your team, even on the minutes restriction. Like, so to me, I, I don't know. I mean, to me, I'm, I'm, I would just shot the point. Now, obviously, they got to play regardless. But at the same time, bruh, okay, they got drunk. Okay, they got Dennis Schroeder, who was hurt hell half a game, and then they got addicted. Okay, I mean, I can't even say, okay, they got KCP because his ass cost me to win the cash last night. <laughs> Hot early and then went cold late. So they didn't, like, they didn't have, like, enough pieces for me to say, okay, yeah, you finna beat a team with Kevin Durant and Kyrie. And you finna beat a team that got a surge of LaMarcus Aldridge. In a solid, I guess you could say off the bench, solid Blake Griffin. Like, imagine when Braun come out this. Just imagine. Oh yeah, it, it's gonna be different. It, it's gonna be different, and we'll see how you know things shake out for the Nets and the Lakers, you know, down the line. And health wise for both teams, how things gonna go for the rest of the season. But here, ladies and gentlemen, on IA Sports Radio, we're ha- having 90s week here. And I think the thing we're going to discuss real quick is the playing styles in college basketball between, you know, in the 90s and compared to today. I think, you know, for me, the art of the big man, mainly for me, the art of the big man, I think is kind of, Kind of gone in college basketball in a sense, especially like for the big time program in a sense. You're not following your, you're not following your, following, following your system throughout a, a, a big man. You know, you don't got that six nine between and seven one big man. You run your offense through. These days, I mean, these days compared to the nineties. In the nineties, you had you had that, or you, your star power forward or whatnot, who was six nine six ten. Those days are long gone. Like, I'll use this for example: Jolie Okafor. Jolie Okafor is a player who came in, who came out. In the wrong time frame. He really did. He was an excellent prep player. Very excellent prep player. Had a very solid freshman year at Duke. But, well, I'll say this about the NBA situation. I think he got him, Norris Noel, even Joel B to an extent. Got put in a tough spot being drafted by the same team. And them not maximizing their strengths and stuff like that. Basically, 
Sam, Sam Hinky, even though he probably got the best pick out of all of them, really stunted Norris Noel's and Julio Okafor's growth by drafting them, those guys. But if you put a Julio Okafor in the 90s, especially in even a, a 90s Duke team, one of those 90s Dukes teams. Hell yeah. He would, shit, we probably talked about one of the best big men to come through. I believe that. But now, you know, we don't see that no more, D-Log. We see running gun. You know, a lot of guys, you know, spacing and stuff like that. You know, from your Belmonts and all that to the big programs that we kind of see that trickling through. Like your like your Arkansas, Alabama. They always talk about, you know, he don't like players taking twos at all. If you draw either you going for a layup or you kicking out for a three pointer. But you ain't shooting no mid range shots like Horace Grant. That, that ain't happening. What were your thoughts, you know, of playing styles of the nineties compared to today? Uh, I mean, like I said earlier, I think the big thing is, you know, it's a little bit more space. The only person I think in the 90s that would just legit still be balling in this day and age, and that's just because I, I know a lot. I mean, people might disagree with me. But I think I think this guy in his prime is legit like a top, the top five player ever in the NBA right now. I might get a lot of hate for saying this, but I think he's that good. And the person that I would say that still would live, that would still work in this day's NBA is Shaq. Because Shaq did so much damage, I don't remember the board, but you get him not just in the L.A. days, but more so the Orlando days. He was a person that could move very well. You know, so until he stopped taking care of his body, stopped taking care of his body which he even said himself, he wished he could have done better. But um, for me, I feel like now it's more so of you got to be that big man that can score. You got to be that big man that can move. You got to be that big man that can, like, come down and play that defense on the smaller guards. Um, And that's what we see a lot more now. I mean, I know I seen yesterday a lot of, you know, the pick and roll and seeing Drummond kind of get matched up against Kevin Durant a couple of times. He didn't win every battle. But that is what we're coming to. I don't think that much that really happens that much in the nineties. No, you no, know, that happens. You you you're either gonna get a shooting foul or an and one, you know, from that guard or that small four going against that center. So, um, for me, and obviously the physicality, like, you know, the, the hard fouls back in the day, you know, they get those hard fouls now. And these players literally be fighting each other, right? So, um, for me, I think that. The 90s was a lot more physical, but the Twin Towers worked back then, right? I don't know if it works too much now because these big men can move. I mean, look at Embiid. Embiid is out here looking like uh, Embiid and Jokic are out here jacking three. So you get you somebody that big who can shoot a three-pointer, you can't leave him out there at the three-point line. He's so big, you would want to make sure, okay, I don't want to get to the basket, but hell, if you give him a chance to take the shot, we was going to jack the three. So, like, at this point, you know, now you got to and, – and it affects how these players draft. I mean, how these teams draft. I'm sorry, how these teams draft. You got to be long. You know, you got to have these players very long. So, hell, if you really look at it, the point guards are starting to get pretty long too. So, it's starting to, it's starting to evolve into, I think, a, a bigger league, like longer players. Um, but, obviously, the physicality is different. But with these big guys that can shoot, man, you can't leave them at the three point the three point line, man. And also, like you mentioned about Jokic and Embiid, mainly Jokic. If if you're not a good decent passer, also to keep that offense flowing and stuff like that, and especially in today today's college basketball, that space and space and pace, 
then you get you you can't do nothing. And like you mentioned, if you can't shoot a, a three pointers on a consistent basis, you might not see the game at all. Unless you go to a play for a coach that plays very slow and stuff like that, back to the back to the old school type of way, but those coaches ain't coming around no more like that. And it sucks for me, for like a guy like me that loves watching the art, watching the big man. But sadly, I put a bow. We we'll put a bow on this. Sadly, that art is gone. And you know, it kind of sucks that we don't have the coaches anymore to coach up these top big men to dominate down low. And. You know, if everybody, you know, kind of going with the trend, I don't think, you know, we'll probably see that style here in the near future in college basketball. But this has been our show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in with us. D-Lock, how can people find you on social media? You guys definitely can find me at Black Dash 813. Um, you will see me, you know, tweet also. Hit up the fast break crowd, especially when I see stuff about who was going to sign Enos Cannon. I see that crazy ass team called the Orlando Magic giving that man four years, 80 million, or something stupid. But yeah, y'all can follow me there. Let them know where they can find you at, man. You can find me at Spawn4288. That is Spawn4288. Also, you can follow me on my other show, The Crooks Process, on Facebook and Instagram. Please do follow me on there. Also, please do follow us on Twitter at Twitter at Fastbreak at I E S R. That is Fastbreak I E S R. So please do follow us on there. And then also, please join join us uh, after our show, the Soccer Scoreboard Show, with Andrew um, H- Hangerball. Immediately after us. So do also check out the website iesportsradio.com. Buy some merch. Show us some love on there. Also follow us on Twitter at iesports radio. Instagram at IE Sports Radio. A lot of contact coming through for IE Sports Radio on Instagram. Do check it out. Also check out Facebook, IE Sports Radio as well. But till then, ladies and gentlemen, we are out. We'll talk to y'all next week. Bill